for deeper revelation when nothing else will do. Tune in to A Godly Woman's View with Anita C. Spaulding and her anointed panel of godly women who will minister, inspire, and set your soul on fire. Woo! Yeah! Watch and listen every Tuesday night from 8.30 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on blogtalkradio.com slash a godly woman's view and also on livestream.com slash a godly woman's view. Thank you so much. We appreciate it more than you know. A Godly Woman's View with Anita C. Spaulding. Good evening. You've just tuned into a godly woman's view with Pastor Anita C. Spaulding as your host of A Godly Woman's View. And I'm excited tonight to be able to come to you. We've had a little um, technical difficulties on this evening, but listen, we're here now. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad it, glad in it. And I'm certainly happy tonight because we have a great show for you on this evening. We have one of God's gospel icons, a great woman of God who is in the backstage and she is going to tell us her story. And her name is is Evangelist, excuse me, Shirley Graham from Holy Temple Church of God in Christ. And I'm going to bring her on in a couple of seconds because I know that you guys are waiting for her to come on and to um, share what she has with the body of Christ on today. But we want you to help us to build the audience on tonight. We want you to share, to tag, and even to comment when you see something good or uh, you hear something good and you want her to answer a question, we certainly will um, ask her to ask, um, we will ask her the question on tonight. But A Godly Woman's View has been in existence since 2012, and we are an organization with our 501c3, and uh, A Godly Woman's View fosters mentoring, modeling, and molding a positive image and godlike character to in women. And I'm telling you, we have someone that has been around for a little while, but we're going to bring her from the backstage on this evening. And this is our evangelist. Oh my goodness. Just say God hello to you. everybody. Hello. God bless you, everybody. God bless you in your homes. Wow. And this is certainly a delight um, that you're on with us on this evening. And we, as we were telling the people that we had a little technical difficulty, but listen, that's over right now. We're, we're here. Right. And I see those of you that's already signing on and you're sharing and you're tagging um, with your friends, because I'm telling you, there's something good about to happen tonight. And I know that um, evangelist Shirley Graham has this testimony. Jesus is the best thing that ever yeah, happened yeah. to her. So how you doing today? I'm doing just fabulous. I thank the Lord because he's good. And we'll talk about that. There's, there's a whole lot of things behind just doing well and fabulous and all that. That's my confession. That's where I choose to live regardless of the circumstances. Wow. And there's a lot of things that have transpired um, in your lifetime and in, in our lifetime. But we see those of you that are coming on. We see our evangelist, Beverly uh, Levy. God bless you, woman of God. I see how you. Oh, my goodness. This is so good. This is so good. I see you, um, Lisa. Lisa is on tonight. She says, God bless you, Mother Evangelist Graham Laverne Smith. We see them, they're coming on. We're giving you a chance just to come on because of the glitches that we had on this evening. Yes. Ernestine Gordon, all the way from Alabama. God bless all you, woman of right. God. Right. You watch every single week. I just want to um, share her um, evangelist Shirley Graham's bio on this evening with all of you that are watching. Um, evangelist Shirley Graham is a well-trained Bible teacher, conference, seminar, lecturer, visionary, renowned speaker, and has faithfully worked overseeing prison ministry for over 14 years. She holds a Bachelor of Biblical Studies from Christian Central University and is a graduate of Temple Bible Institute. In addition, Evangelist Graham has successfully completed various divinity courses from Advanced Christian Training School, Deliverance Bible Institute, and Manhattan 
Hatton Bible Institute. Evangelist Graham was licensed as an evangelist in the Church of God in Christ over 38 years ago. You don't look that much older than 38. <laughs> Trust me, I am. <laughs> in the fall of 2001, she received the honor of being ordained by Bishop Donald Hilliard Jr. Evangelist Graham is a well-rounded evangelist who has made several guest appearances on Praise the Lord or the Trinity Broadcasting Network TVN in Atlanta, Georgia, as well as hosted numerous shows of her own at the TVN studio in Fishkill, Fishkill, New York. Her commitment to discipleship has affected thousands of lives throughout the United States, Great Britain, Germany, and Trinidad. Evangelist Graham works faithfully alongside her husband, Dr. David C. Graham, as assistant pastor. As part of her service, Evangelist Graham heads the women's department of Holy Temple Church of God in Christ, along with overseeing the intercessory prayer ministry, the educational departments of the church, as well as the missions department. Evangelist Graham personifies the bit the beatitude, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. I'm getting caught up already. That's one, that's one of my favorite scriptures. Her love and her passion for God and his people keeps her in constant pursuit of God's will. She strongly desires to see souls birthed into the kingdom of God, grow in their Christian experience, and in turn become soul winners themselves. Her compassion for people drives her desire to see the will of God fulfilled in individual lives and people walking in their God-ordained destiny. Consequently, her messages are grounded in the simplicity of Christ crucified and aimed at snatching, I love this, snatching souls from Satan's grasp. She is the proud she is most proud of her commitment to her family, being married for 53 years. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> that's a half a century to Dr. David C. Graham. Together they have two daughters, Valerie and Anita. My name is Anita. Yeah. And yeah. son, David J., and four grandchildren. Then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. God bless you and welcome to A Godly Woman's View. Thank you so very, very much. It is a pleasure to be on board with you and your program. Uh, I see it occasionally and uh, I, you've always been a wonderful person, very warm and full of hospitality wherever our paths cross. And who knew that this pandemic would bring us all even closer for well, that matter. I am grateful to be here tonight and to all of the saints out there. God bless you. Yes, and this is such a great time that we're able to, uh, that she's going to be able to share her story. And truly she has a story. She has gone through the thick and the thin. And I believe that she has victories, lots of victories, just not right. the thick and the thin, but there's victories that have um, transpired in her life. Listen, I, I see that you've been married for 53 years. Just tell us a little bit about your husband. My husband, uh, Dr. David C. Graham, Pastor Graham, we met, oh Lord, I uh, said so 53 years, we'll be 54 years in June, just another uh, uh, month, month and a couple of days away, we'll be 54 years. I met wow. him 55 years ago, maybe, maybe the end of uh, 55, somewhere in the middle of there years ago. I met him through my dad because oh, wow. my father, yes, my father did not approve of the young man that I was dating. Now he wasn't a down and out person, but I didn't I don't I don't care for the down and out, you know, okay. But uh my father met my husband through some friends. Uh his best friend and my husband was living with that family. He had come here from California, he was living with the family at another church. And so my wow. father saw him, and my father had the gift of Cupid, which I think I have also. 
and he just took a liking to him and he didn't want me to get involved with the young man to marry rather the young man that I was anticipating marrying. And wow. so he set it up with his best friend to bring my husband, that young minister over to the house. Well, first of all, I didn't want to get married to a minister at all <laughs> because I wanted the typical church fan family where a husband and a wife and two and a half kids are on the second or the third row in church. You wanted the American it. family. I the wanted American. the American church family. I did not want to be involved. My father was a pastor from the time I was seven. He was the assistant pastor uh, by the time I was born. And so all I know is church. And so, wow. and it, I mean, I, it wasn't a bad experience, but I just wanted to not have to live the pastor life. And wow. uh, my parents were very given to mission work, very much mission work. I watched my mother uh, call a cab. Matter of fact, she had an agreement with the cab company over there in Newark. And she would call a cab over and load it with three to five bags of groceries, pay the guy yeah. and send it on the other side of town to a family that didn't have food or a single head of home, or a woman by herself raising her kids. My clothes went out the door with the tags on them because somebody needed them, which wow. I don't have no problem with that. I don't have any, I don't, I don't have problem with that today. It made me non-selfish and I'm grateful wow. for that. So, uh, People lived with us from the congregation when they didn't have any place to stay. I could be in the bed and all of a sudden I would hear them bringing somebody home that didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost at the church. And so then they bring them home. We lived up on the fourth floor and uh, and they would come in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they would work with them until they started speaking in tongues and then send them on out and go home. So. I want no parts of that. When the missionaries came from <laughs> Africa or the islands, uh, especially Trinidad, and they would stay with us many times from June to October for the convention. I was raised up in the United Holy Church of America. And so okay. I married into the Church of God in Christ, but I'm a UHC person. And so when yes, I, so, I, got, so I came from um, United Holiness too. Yeah, my what, family, what my great great. Um, down on Camden Street in Newark, Mother Stitch. Yes. Yeah, I, my great grandmother was Mother Southgate, and um, wow. we fellowshipped. And I remember them all dressed in black. I, I remember those days, and with the little white collars that they had. Yes, uh, and they, they did they, some of that too. And they before they had air conditioning, it was very hot in the church. I was a little oh, a little child. <laughs> there was no <laughs> air conditioning in our church at one twenty five Prince Street. Right across oh, wow. the street from Metropolitan Baptist Church, and it was Union Gospel Tabernacle. Oh, and, okay, okay. Yeah, pastor Darton was the pastor, and my father was the assistant pastor when they moved up here from North Carolina. And then he passed, and they made my father the pastor. So I've been in church all my life. Wow. So then I was kind of looking for a way to just have a normal life, you know? A normal and life. A normal <laughs> life, people life, you know? And so uh, I was getting ready to marry someone, but he wasn't saved. But thank God for them old praying oh, mothers. Jesus. Oh, how yeah, you, he wasn't how saved. did you meet up with him? <laughs> on my job. On my job. Oh, on the job. <laughs> on the job. And Listen, so you're listening to A Godly Woman's View, and we have the privilege of interviewing our evangelist, Shirley Graham. They call We call her Mom Graham. And Truly, mm -hmm. she is a woman of wisdom, integrity, power, um, prayer. I, I, I just, I'm just excited on tonight, and I see many of you that are um, logging in and, and just wishing her well on this evening. And it's good because there's so many, you know, women that aren't mature in Christ, and it's good mm -hmm. to see mothers in Zion. I'm not calling you old, but you're seeing. I am. No, I'm <laughs> seventy-seven. I'm kissing eighty. I'm 77. Oh, yes. Oh my God. I would have yes. never guessed that in a million years. Yeah, I'm you not great. a little beyond being a teenager, okay? <laughs> 77. And I thank God because uh, the enemy has tried to take my life, lead me to death on four different occasions. Wow. And God wow. each time rescued me from that. And so anyway, wow. as I said, uh my my the saints, those old mothers, which I have become one of now. <laughs> and they would say, daughter, the Bible says, be ye not unequally yoked together with an unbeliever. And Mother right. Dazel Vick, she's gone on to be with the Lord. She sat down in front of me 
at, at our, I don't know if it was her house or where, but anyway, we were all eating dinner. And she said, I'm not going to eat until the Lord changes your mind. I'm wow. going to fast and pray till God changes your mind. And I was very respectful because in my day, you, I still to this day, you do not speak right. out of turn to a senior or in any way less than respectful. So I, I looked at her and I thought in my mind and I said, you're going to starve. You're going to wow. starve. Because I'm going to do exactly what I got in my what mind. What you wanted to do. to do, right. That's what I wanted to do. But because the teaching was so deep in me and the respect that we had. And see, I grew up going to noonday prayers uh, on a day, Monday through Friday. My mother had her tamari underneath her arm and we would walk down the street uh, and get to the noonday prayer. And I watched those old mothers, thank God. They weren't old then. They probably were in their 40s and 50s, really and truly, more, more 50. And they would start praying. And I'm telling you, when they started oh, wow. praying and the power of God would come in that noonday prayer and a light would come through the window and shine a cross on them. And mm -hmm. there was one named Mother Stevens. I, I still hear her voice to this day. She had what I call prayer language. And she wow. would be down praying. And then when the spirit of God would rise up in her, she would sit back on the locks of her legs and put her hands up and look up to heaven. And I'm telling you, that woman could spit out some prayer and it just mesmerized me. I would sit there on the floor because I, from being a toddler right up until the time for me to go to uh, kindergarten, I was at noonday prayer. So mm -hmm. I'm sitting there just looking at them and they would pick me up. And all of this is relevant to who I married. They would wow. pick me up and put me in their laps and say, God, use this child for your wow. glory. And I would look at them and find then another one would take me and they would start praying. It would be different ones during the course of the day. It'd be maybe about four or five of them. And they, they would pray. And then one mother, she said, God, oh, send her around the world. And she said, send her to Africa. As soon as they would say, send me to Africa, I'd start scrambling, trying to get out of their lap because <laughs> I didn't want no parts of wild animals and jungles and, and stuff. The only thing I want place oh, I want to go in Africa is South Africa and be in a nice hotel and I can sightsee and then, you know, go to church somewhere. But long story short, God's mark was on my life. Yes, and yes, so yes. that was the thing. So I began to pray uh, when they were telling me this. They said, pray and ask the Lord. I couldn't get away from what they said. So I began to pray and ask God, if this person I'm thinking about marrying uh, is not right for me, me show yes. me, tell mm -hmm. me, show me, and then send the right one. That wow. very day, and we have been in a good three-year relationship, and that very day, he would do something. He was a nice person. He would do something totally out of context. Wow. And wow. then, that, and mm -hmm. I was like, what? Where did this come from? See, you got to take your time. I don't care what age you get married. You have to find say out. That, say that again, um, say that again I don't evangelist. Care if you get married at 20. 32, 35, 40, 45, or 55. I don't care what the age is. You have to be observed so that God yes. can show you. I can date someone, winter, spring, summer, and fall, and a day, a year and a day. Because wow. people act different in season. And so yes. you have to see them for a complete year to understand what's at work in them or what's operating in them, what bloodline curses they're under. Where, where is their extreme, what is their their desire where God is concerned? And so- You um, know, um, Evangelist, Evangelist Graham, some um, want to enter into marriage so bad that they don't they want settle. to wait on the Lord. And we're, we're talking it. about Christian women. We have to, we, you have to wait on God. I wait, I, I understand. I waited on the Lord and mm -hmm. my mother and my great grandmother, cause they were pastoring and they taught us, taught me anyway. And I listened um, how to wait on God to send you somebody. And I said, well, God, I want, I want a man that is working. I want him to have his own car. I want him to have his own because I was working at AT&T and I had my own car, my own money, my own this. Thank and you. I said, I and I said Lord, and I want him saved, you know? And a lot of women, they settle. And we should not settle, but we should wait on God. And just like you're saying, 
evangelists and, and you're encouraging those that are not married to wait on God. And, to, and today, not only do you have to just watch them for a year, but you need their background check. They yes, get, you they do credit. today. <laughs> you yes. need everything. Yes. You need and to know completely. Amen. Uh, all, all of that. And listen to those around you. But if you ask God to give you to know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the truth, God will show you. Now, God is yes. only obligated to show us once. Hallelujah. And you have to believe what a person shows you. And so all of a sudden, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, the strangeness started coming out in this brother that I had never seen. Wow. And I said, Lord, I always prayed this prayer. I said, if that's, he's not right, show me and send right. the right send one. Right. He would mm. act a fool that day. And the same day, my husband would come and ring the bell after my husband, my father set us up to meet each other. Because he, he was set to up marriage. Because he, he set us up to be and we met each other and it was like, hi, how you doing? And there was no sparks or anything of that nature. And I went on a, I guess a good another nine months to close to a year before uh I prayed that final prayer. Wow, and three wow. days before, and the Lord showed me about three times mm. that I would say, show me and send the right person. That same time I prayed that the next day, he would do something out of context that very same day. My husband would call. And he was we weren't married then, or he would just come by, talk to my dad, ring the doorbell, and I would be standing at the door like that was good. What? He was getting to your dad. He he was gonna get to you, but he's gonna go to the dad first. Yeah, but you know, I don't even think I was on his mind really. I don't oh, even really? think I was on his mind. God was he won't allow somebody to be hurt, mm, and mm. I wasn't ready. He was, and so he couldn't be ready. So when the time came. Three days before my father died, uh, my father, I went in to, we had his, uh, he was in what you would call uh, hospice at home. And just before he died, and they, he, I went into the room and he said, daughter, he could barely talk because he was losing his ability to speak uh, because he had gotten so sick. And he said, daughter, he said, please, please do not marry this young man that you are planning to marry. He said, wow. you are not like your mother. You would never put up with what your mother put up with for me <laughs> to get saved. Oh, wow. And that Jesus. is true. He, he said to me, he said, you would fight him. Well, I was looking at my dad like, what is he talking about? Because I wasn't a fighter. I never right, had right, fight. Right, right, right. You know, so I'm like, but he said that to me. He said, and then he said, why don't you like that nice young man? And he called David Graham. He said, why don't you like it? He's a nice young man. And then three days from that day, that was a Thursday night, Friday, Saturday at 11.45, that same th third day, my mm -hmm. father went home to be with the Lord at 11.45. Oh, wow. And I could not get that off my mind. And so I was busy trying to answer the phone and open the door for the guests and, that were coming to see my mother. And she was, you know, totally out of it. And this guy, yes. he was there, yes. but he wanted me to sit in a corner with him. Let me go fast speed forward. And so finally, it got down to the place that I had to go to choir rehearsal. And he said, is this how it's going to be that you and I, you're going to always be going to church? I looked at him. I said, you lost your mind. Wow. And nobody's going to tell me I cannot go to church because I, I know that's right. I, I wanted know that's to be right. safe. But I must yes. say, I was in a backslidden state, but I was still in church. Right, right. But I still knew what was right. And I mm -hmm. knew I wanted to get back to God and that I wanted to be saved to the bone. Wow. And so yes, I told him, look, you go your way, I'll go mine. I'm going to be saved because he wouldn't get saved. He wouldn't come. He would come to church. I took him to hear the best preachers. No response. And I said, that's it. You go your way. So then I started doing mm -hmm. this. I looked out the window at the moon one night from my room and I said, my husband, wherever he is, the Bible Lord. says, he that findeth a wife findeth yes. a good thing. Because I read the scriptures. I said, Lord, let him come find me. And so yes. I looked at that moon. I said, you're under the moon somewhere. Uh -huh. You've got to be grown. You can't be four because I'm grown. Wow. And so I said, come find me. And then when the day would break and the sun was out before I would go to work, I look at the sun and I say, Wherever he is, the sun is shining on him. I want you wow. to bless him and cause him 
to find me. Well, my husband found me right in my house. Wow. That went on for about nine months. I wouldn't speak to any guys. You know, back in the day, they used to have choir anniversaries and, you know, the churches would go. Your mother might know about it, but you were too young, you know, that far back. And mm -hmm. uh, we would go to different churches and the girls in the choir, they would say, see, did you see that guy over there? I would turn my head and look in a different direction. And my husband didn't contact me. And wow. I said, because I wasn't interested in anybody. Anybody. Three other really what you would call worldly good uh, catches. One guy was a, a principal of a school. Another wow. one, he was a jazz musician. Another, I don't remember what the other, but I wouldn't have anything to do with them. Each one right, was more right. unsaved than the other one. And the oh, Bible Jesus. said not to be unequally yoked. Unequally Those mothers yoked. were drilling that thing into me. I said, now, Lord, I want to marry, but if I never marry, I'm going to be saved. Wow. And I, spent, and I mm -hmm. kept on with Glory that. to God. Then I was on my way home from work. And while I'm on my way home from work, the spirit of God, because I was really glad to be free to run to Jesus with all my heart. And I always believed in the power of prayer. I didn't understand the power of it, but I mm -hmm. love to be in my room alone and talk to God. I'd lay down mm -hmm. on the side of, yes. of, of on my bedside on the floor and just visualize Jesus in front of me. And I would see myself in front of his sandal shoe feet. And I would lay there and love on him. Just say, God, I love you. God, I praise you. I give you glory. Yes. And so I was used to that environment. So while I'm I'm there, I'm coming home. What I didn't realize, the anointing of God, the spirit mm. of God was coming Lord, on have mercy. See, I didn't know God was going to call me to preach. But see, God knew my future. I didn't know he was going to send me around the to. 80% uh, of the United States. I, so I you had um, evangelists, you didn't have any desire to preach? None, none whatsoever. Wow. Didn't know I was, didn't have any desire, any of those kind of things. But I knew I wanted to be saved. I wanted right. to that, be a yes. soul winner. Yes. Uh, that was my desire to win people. And so when I rededicated myself to the Lord, I would go out on Saturdays and pass out tracks by myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then uh, I don't know if people remember Pastor Lonnie Christian. Many yes, years ago, we were mm -hmm. all teenagers in the church together and he started coming with me. Then he we would I'd have 250 tracks and we were just mm -hmm. good friends and we would pass out the tracks. When the last one was passed out, we knew we had reached 250 people and wow. I come back home. So I'm on my way home. And this is the prayer I prayed. I said, Lord. Send me someone that I can wake up at one o'clock in the morning and wow. we can study and talk about the word of God. I want to save person so wow. we can win souls together and we can discuss the Bible at one or two a.m. in the morning. That's what I wanted. Wow. And so I went on. I'm on my way home from work. And this is oh, nine or 10 months after my father's deceased. And the spirit of God spoke to me. And I had never heard the spirit of God speak to me. It was like audible. And I'm driving in my car by myself. And the Lord said, your husband will be at your house this evening. Now that's nine to 10 months of saying, God, thank you for him. He's come find me. Bless him. Come find me in Jesus name. I get home about four o'clock, somewhere between six and seven. My doorbell rings. I used to live on Chapel Avenue, right off Clinton Avenue in Newark. Oh, yeah, I know where that is. Uh-huh. And the doorbell rang. I buzzed the door because all three floors, it was all saved people in the house, you know. And so when I buzzed the person in, I went to the door, and I'm looking down. I open the door, and I see men's shoes. And I come all the way up, and I yeah. look <laughs> in. Pastor, well, at that time, he was Minister David C. Graham. And my <laughs> mouth dropped open and the spirit of God spoke to me again, loud. He said, wow. I told you your husband would be here this evening. That was about the fourth weekend in October. So we, went, we got married the next year at June 3rd in 1967. And that's and how I met this guy over here. <laughs> over and, he's, and he's a wonderful man. He's Listen, you know, a lot, a lot of people, they don't really hear from God. They don't listen for the voice of God to speak in any area in their life. And that's what we need to um, learn to do is listen to God. 
God is not going, he's, he doesn't, um, uh, he's not erroneous. He doesn't give you, That's um, right. say things in error, but he tells you just what he wants you to do and how to do it. Now, sometimes we might not want to, because we think, well, maybe not that way, God, maybe you should do it this way, but mm -hmm. we have to listen to the voice of God. And I'm listening to you because, um, when I met my mate, um, Dr. Richard Spalding was the same way. I didn't want anybody that was not saved. I met him at church. I met him working. I met him living for God. I was preaching, minding my business. And, you know, like you said, all these other young men, they were liking me. And I'm like, oh, my God. I said, you know, you just like me because you just saw me preach and the anointing was flowing. That's all. You're, you're in love with the anointing. But the thing is, is that we do have to ask God for things. We have to ask God where we want to live. People don't do this. God, should I move here? God, should I marry this person? Lord, should is this job for me? But they don't really involve God in their matters, in the matters mm -hmm. that we should. And we should let um, ask God to, to be involved in our life. You know, mm -hmm. and, we, and we should ask him because he's going to direct you. He said, trust in the Lord yes. with all of thine heart and lean not and to not your own understanding. understanding. And that's what many that are led by the spirit of God, they're the sons of God. Yes. And we have to be led. And you are definitely a prayer warrior, a woman of wisdom and of power. And I trust those of you that's watching a godly woman's view on tonight that you are grasping and you're gleaning from this woman of God because she is awesome. Someone says they have a question. What is your question, um, Carissa uh, Torres? Type it in for me, all right? Type your question in for me so I can ask that of evangelist um, Shirley Graham. And I thank God for her because on the, this, this, is, this is history here on A Godly Woman's View that we have the renowned the, I mean, the renowned evangelist Shirley Graham. Embarrassing, embarrassing. She, she's so, and no, she's so humble and so sweet. I mean, she's. We were talking the other day. She could, I could have stayed on the phone just to listen to her for hours, sharing um, her stories, but also um, giving nuggets because that's what I like to talk to. Old, I always was around older people. Me anyway, too. You know, Me and too. I gleaned from them and I learned from them. I love to be around the mothers of the church, the praying mothers that told you the truth. Today, yes. folks, yeah. the folks don't want to be. They around don't want that today. They don't they don't want that. But you, you know, they're missing a world of wisdom and yes, missing yes. Uh, uh, they're missing. They will miss making mistakes. I've been abused. He cheated on me. Can I tell if I'm ready for marriage? I've been abused. He cheated on me. How can I tell I'm ready right. for marriage? OK, you want to address that first? Well, no, you can do? address it. All right. When she says she's been abused, have you been abused by this man that you're considering marrying? Mm. Now, if you, someone's abusing you and you have not married them yet, you need to run. Yes, because run whatever. Fast. In a hurry. <laughs> okay, uh, like super fast. Because whatever they're doing before you marry them, they're going to do that and a whole bunch more. Okay, so if you if you're with someone and they have an a, a extreme temper or they're jealous and uh, run, a, a run. I say run for the hills. I made up in my mind. I said. Nobody's I'm going to be me. saved <laughs> if I have to be by myself, but I'm going to be saved. And I asked the Lord to save me to the bone. Let me say to my sister that's out there, I feel for you, sweetheart. Yes. Uh, intimacy, you will not enjoy when you're being abused. There will be, because intimacy that only comes about because there's a good relationship between you and your husband. Yeah, but wow, there's, wow. there's no joy in a lack of fellowship and a joyful relationship when you're in the, the Holy of Holies, your bedroom. There, there's no joy in that unless there's a good relationship outside that room. And see, mm -hmm, these are mm -hmm. things, so if people look at marriage, well, I want to get married because I don't want to commit fornication. You will have no joy in that relationship unless it's a good relationship. Mm -hmm, you won't mm -hmm. want to be touched or bothered by someone. I know too many people that are in abusive relationships. And let me let me share this with you. When my husband and I, after we got married, we went away uh, uh, for the week and for, on our honeymoon. We came back in the middle of the week. That Saturday, we got out and went to doing street work. Yes. Pastor Apostle yes. Ralph Nichols. Oh, at that yes. time, 
he, he wasn't the apostle then. He was just an evangelist, lived around the corner on Bourbon Street. And he <laughs> came and uh, a pastor, he went, he became a bishop. Uh, uh, what is this? So lovely. I've heard him speak for our state worldwide for our churches. Okay, anyway, I'll read that later. Uh, she, I told Bishop, uh, what was his name, honey? What was the guy's name up there that passed the church up on, above Seymour Avenue? He, he passed. No, not Jennings. Anyway, he was that we did street we work with Scrivens. Oh, Scrivens, yeah, Doctor yes, Scrivens. Okay. Doctor Scrivens. Yeah. We were yes. all young then, all young. Mm -hmm. And he used a, a mailbox as his podium, and he was on the corner of Clinton <laughs> and Bergen Street, right there across wow. from Randy's Meat Market. And mm. we heard the noise. We went around there to look, and we saw him. That was it for the next three years. Every Saturday from about 1130 in the day. Sometimes we didn't come back home until after 1130 at night. We were out there. I was the only girl in the team. All the rest were. And then it was Elder Collier, Bishop Collier, who's gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, uh, Scrivens. I can't think. And Collier's brother, my husband, and myself. Right. So, right. so when the guys, when they wouldn't listen to the guys, I could jump in front of a car and they would stop. And take my track. And so wow, I did, you, yes, know, yes. you know, that's my kind of boldness, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. I'm really a quiet, shy person. But when it comes Ooh, to things with God, I'm so bold. Right I am yeah, quiet. You're quiet. <laughs> but when it comes to God, now if you get me started, you know, I'll speak my mind. But <laughs> yeah, you tell she tells it like it is, y'all. I'm a truth like teller. I'm a truth teller. That's the way God made me for a reason. My mother was married from the time she was 18. Wow. They told her she could not have any children. My father was 55. He was nine years older than my mother. Okay. They got married. She begged the Lord for a baby girl from the point of marriage until I was born. I was born wow. to her at age 45. Jesus. She never had had a pregnancy. I even asked my father one day, I said, I said, dad, because I'm an only child. I said, you know, do I have any sisters and brothers by your own testimony? You were out there when you were young and all that kind of stuff. And hi, Shakira Craig. God bless you, sweetheart. Uh, I said, <laughs> by chance, do I have a brother or a sister? I just want to go find them. You I just want to know. Have I, I, <laughs> yeah, I just want to know. And he looked at me. He said, oh, you silly girl. He was a marvelous person, a great person wow. to talk to. Him. There was nobody like him. And he said, no, babe, you're the only thing I ever had. I wow. was going to my dad at 55 and my mom at 45. Jeez. She begged the Lord, hear what I'm going to say, for a daughter. I said, mama, why you ask for a daughter? If I was, you know, begging the Lord, because I asked God for four sons. I got one son, two daughters, and one son. That was it. But God yeah. has a purpose in everything. My, uh, our oldest daughter's gone on to be with the Lord. Our youngest daughter is Dr. Anita Phillips, Graham Phillips. Right. And she preaches for Jakes and, and Evans and all over the country. And on uh, the talk, she was on the talk here a couple of days ago. She's on the news at any time. Yeah. Uh, she has a fantastic a ministry. Uh, my son is like me. He's still running. He don't want to know parts of it. But he'll be in there after a while because God He's called me. He's gonna come on. He's gonna come on. He I was to. pregnant when God called me to preach, and I started preaching until I went to the hospital to give birth to him. And he would sing praise songs in my arm when he was a little bitty infant. When he couldn't talk, wow. he could sing praise songs. So it's gonna get him sooner. It's in him. Yes. Yes, in him. So I, I, she prayed that God would give her a daughter. I said, "Why a daughter?" She said, "I don't know." I wanted a daughter with a lot of hair so I could put a lot of bowls on her. My mother had <laughs> bowls all over my head. I'd take them out when I got around the corner and then I'd go to what she stood. That was too many bowls right. in my head. I was like, no, nah, I can't do this, Ma. I can't do this. I come back home with my in my pocket, maybe leave one on the top. But she said she prayed. Uh, how long has Pastor Graham been married now? 53 years, 54 June 3rd. Okay. I I she prayed that God would give her a daughter and that she would give me back to God for his service. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, I, but God put that desire in her heart. They told her she couldn't have children. Then they told her when she got pregnant at wow. 45, that if she did not let them abort me, she would die and I would be stillborn. Well, mom lived mm. to be 99 and I'm 77. Wow. She, she went home wow. to be the Lord. 
at 95 in 1999. Okay. Jesus. Coming up, I did not know that God was going to call me to preach. See, you have a time to be born. You have mm -hmm. a time. I have a time. God brought me in 1943 to grow up to the age. God didn't send me out to preach until I was at least 35. Mm. Uh, people kept telling it to me. And I would, I don't want to hear it. I would run. They would put me on programs in our youth conventions at UHC and it would almost overtake me, but I didn't want no parts of it. And mm -hmm. my mother, thank God for her. She said, don't let anybody send you anywhere. You wait yeah. till God speaks to you. I said, you don't have no problem here, mom. I, I'm not trying to hear nothing. And one day we were unloading groceries from the mm -hmm. back of my car. My mother lived with me in Highland Park when we moved from Newark to Highland Park, New Jersey. And the spirit of God spoke to me just as loud and plain. And he said, go somewhere by yourself. And the only place you could be in my house, we had, the, the th I was pregnant then with him and the other two kids. And my mother lived with us and the cats had kittens, cat had kittens. The only place you could be by yourself was in the bathroom. Lord, so I left my mom out there with the groceries because I was driven by the spirit of God. I went in. Close the door. Remember years ago, we used to have towels, maybe before your time. We had towels in the, the bathroom that you didn't touch. They were just there because they were oh, pretty. Yeah, for decoration, right. Decoration. With the, with the okay. on them or something. Yeah. I yes. I took one down, spread it on the floor. This is what the Spirit of God led me to do, wow. to kneel on. I took the other one. I put it across the commode. The third one, I took it and draped it over my head. Wow. I had never done that, never heard it. And I got down and all I could do was mm, weep mm, mm. and cry. And I would say, I'm not, not I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm not good mm, enough. Mm -hmm. I'm, God, I'm not worthy. But the thing that I did not notice, and I'm trying to get fast because I know our time is almost gone. And I, I the bathroom lit up with a golden hue, a complete yeah. golden light came over until it almost blinded me. And the Lord yeah. spoke to me then. He said, this day have I anointed you to carry my gospel. My and I will God. make the words come alive in your mouth. And that was it. I didn't that tell, I came out that bathroom. I didn't tell nobody. I didn't tell my husband, my mother, nobody. I didn't, I was shaking. I didn't know what to do because it blew me away. I didn't remember until later on that I had seen that yellow bright light twice right, in my right. life. Once when my mother was in prayer and an angel appeared in the corner of her room while she was fasting 10 days wow. a night. The this second awesome. time I saw it was when I got saved. And when the power of God knocked me out in the floor, the fourth Sunday in October, 1957, and the power of God came over me so strong until it blinded me with this bright, bright golden light. That's mm. the only time I saw that again until God called me to preach. And I came out and didn't tell nobody. People started God's honest truth. People started calling the house and saying, would you come and speak for us? And I said, what, what made you call me? And they said, we are having a service and we were praying for the speaker. And the Lord said, Shirley Graham. Wow. And I was like, what? That went on and went on. And I went and I was speaking. The power of God would take me over. And it was, you know, people mm. would get saved. When I first got saved. I had an anointing to get people filled with the Holy Ghost for Holy years Ghost. and years. I still do, but not like it was in the beginning. God changes your ministry as the years go by. Mm -hmm, he mm -hmm, enlarges mm -hmm. it, he puts more yes. responsibility on you. That I had to be born when I did because I stood in pulpits that women had never stood in before wow. yes, on Lord. a Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And that's why God used me to break through for these the young barrier. women are coming through here now. That was 40 right. some years ago. Baptist churches, some Pentecostal churches. I, I'm treated with the greatest respect wherever yes, I are. go. Yes. Everywhere I go with the greatest mm -hmm. respect. But God had to have somebody that Hallelujah. conducted themselves like a woman of honor and not, you know, I say, I, I have a handkerchief, but mine has lace on it. You still got to <laughs> be a lady. I don't have That's a desire right. to be anything else but a lady. Right. And you tell <laughs> God's truth, not yours. Mm -hmm. Lord, you understand I'm what I'm saying? You tell, yes, but my desire was to win souls. So God had now, back to why I married this man. God <laughs> had him. We're we going to get it all together after a while. And I, I know, know so much in you. I'm Evangelist Graham.
And those of you that's watching, I know that you're enjoying, but I want you to just um, hit the hearts. If you're enjoying what this woman of God is, is pouring into us, she's empowering, impacting, and she's enlightening and encouraging us on tonight on a godly woman's view. I want you just to hit those hearts and hit those thumbs up. If you're enjoying it, come on, let's just, oh, come on, let's, we're praising God. Let's praise him with the heart since I can't hear y'all. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Okay, praise the Lord. That's right. That hearts are going to represent praising God tonight. That's it. We praising God for this um, woman of God who's sharing her testimony of why she married that man. No. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So, so when when we, we got married, everything was fine. And yes, all of that. Yes, and that yes. was, we got married. I was 23. God didn't wow. call me to preach until I was 35, almost 36. Well, how did, how did, how did um, Dr. Graham feel about this? He, he didn't marry a preacher. No. He, he married, he just married a wife and then let me tell you, he had your call to ministry. So how did he feel about this? Oh, our, our story is funny because I don't believe my husband even believed in women preachers because he came from a church that taught. That women right, right, were, right. She could be teachers, but they weren't called to preach. And his pastor didn't believe that God called women to preach. And Lord so that's what he was he under. something to deal with then. Oh, I, <laughs> he never gave me a hard time. My mother said that God called me to preach to teach him a lesson. But his pastor <laughs> became one of my biggest fans before he left here. Wow, his own wow. pastor. When, when God called me to preach and I didn't tell nobody and I was going and preaching in different places all around and God didn't send me outside of the state of New Jersey <laughs> until my son was three and a half, almost four. That's biblical weaning age. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's biblical. Mm -hmm. And when my son became three and a half, just about four, that's when I had to go and travel where I had to spend overnight. So my story is a Samuel story. Wow. And so when God, when God would use me so powerfully, my husband came to me one day and he said, babe, he said, you got to stop bootlegging. You got to get some license. Uh -huh. And he you know said, what? that's awesome. <laughs> that's, he's the one that sent me to our state supervisor and wow. said, my wife needs license because wow. she's Paul. Now, Good my, husband is a pastor. my husband is a pastor teacher. He was called to be a pastor teacher and to build a church. Build, we started build. from in the church in Tom River from a little army barracks building, which was broke down with three mm. 150 watt light bulbs. Look on the Facebook and you will see, look up Holy Temple Church of God in Christ, Tom right. River, New Jersey. And you will see, we own the block. We have four lots yeah, first. Yeah. We own the block and, and equal property across the street. That's a Jesus. rural community. It's not a city, but it's a oh. rural community. And the church is built. Half the block is the church. The other half of the block is the parking lot. And the wow. other property across the street. And then we've been given some more property where we have uh, Sadie Vickers, a resource and development center that we have to help in the community. So Jeez, when he, God beautiful. called him, he was an elder. He didn't know he was going to pass. I didn't know I was going to preach. Gonna I didn't preach. know he was going to be a pastor. And I was going to end up being a pastor's wife. But it was it in the plan. plan. It was in the plan. It was all in the plan. But my yes, husband, Lord. he's a pastor teacher. God called me to travel. So wow. I was out about three times out of a month for, and back in the day, you would run revival for a week or five days. Yeah. So I would be out maybe two. It depends on how many days I agreed to stay out. But my mother lived with us. So there was my mother in the house and my husband. There was always two adults in the house. He didn't have a problem with it. He doesn't have, my husband don't have no problem with me at all. He That's said, you true, go beautiful. and you do what God, he has always been my support. Whenever I mm -hmm, left, he got mm -hmm. on a plane or train or whatever. I had money to come back home if they didn't treat me right. I had money to be fed. <laughs> I'm serious. I understand that. One time I was down, and I'm not going to say where, but I was down. Uh, 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 in the south somewhere, and they didn't feed me. And I called my what? husband up. I'm telling you, the people didn't feed me. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm down here in this place. I called my husband. I said, babe, they're not feeding me. And I didn't have a car. He called up one of the men in the Church of God in Christ. He said, go over to such and such a place. 
get my wife. And the man came and got me, him and his wife, and they took me and they fed me. Wow. And the wow. next day, somebody else came and brought me food. <laughs> so I've never been anywhere that my husband didn't have my back and cared for me. And that's beautiful. He and you cared know, he chased a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight. So here he was. Um, home base, and here you were traveling. And yes, this and my mother was taking care of the kids. And this, and too. That's now I, want, I want those that are traveling to understand. I Talk didn't go us. unless I had my husband's permission. Uh oh, uh, say that. I didn't, go I, anywhere. Say that again. I didn't go unless he told me he was okay with it. And there were times I consulted, took all my dates to him. I said, Babe, I'm invited. Da 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 da. Here's his date. And he said, Fine, go ahead. And then one day he uh, he said, uh, I need you at the church. No problem. And I was invited to this big time bishop's church. I called up. I can't come. My husband needs me. Mm -hmm. And that was that. See, God mm -hmm. knows where you're supposed to be. You don't never try to get an appointment for yourself. You go That's wherever true. God sends you. And so, mm -hmm. but this is, I, I, I live with his approval. When he, when I got ready to leave to go run revival somewhere, my three kids, their clothes, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday while I was you gone. You made out all their clothes? All their clothes from their socks to their underwear to their little pants to their tops. Ooh. And I put Monday on it. All that my mother had to do was open the drawer and take out that day. Or they you opened it up and took out their day. Then that's not where I stopped. I cooked collard greens, candy yams, baked chicken, macaroni and cheese, and I froze it in aluminum pans. So all they had to do was take it out of the freezer and put it in the oven. They don't cook today, mother. They what you have to tell them that again. <laughs> I cooked. You can't. You could. You will have no anointing if you don't take care of your home. The home. You got to take care. My of house home. was clean. Food was mm -hmm. cooked. The clothes Jesus. were washed, and they Lord, had my mercy. back. And I went there, and the, and God would use me. Would use. Wow. And so Listen. that's why I had to marry him. And Listen. then he had to marry me because we're both totally different for anybody that knows us up close. But you, we're, but you, but you compliment each other. No, you we're totally the same while we're totally different. Okay. You <laughs> we're totally the same. We're one person. But I go to the left and he goes to the right. But we oh, are totally God. the same when it comes to the things of God. Wow. And so how our church got built, I meet a lot of people and God gives me favor. Yes, and I was yes, doing yes. I was doing uh, ministry at the Amen. prison, Clinton Correctional Institution mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. I did that for 14 years. I went in there. Right. I went in there before I, I started preaching and wow. telling people that God loved them and that you need Jesus as your savior. I did that way before I could call to preach. And wow. so I was in there. Finally, I won such favor until they let me go. By myself, how did Pastor Graham propose? He yeah, said, well, we're going to get married. That's, he said, so that's what he said. Please, he said, that's what he said. He said, when are we going to okay. get married? I said, I don't know. Let's, it's okay. We will. And we started looking for engagement ring. And someone on his job yeah, told him about the it. Engagement ring. Me and him went to look together because I wanted the one I wanted. <laughs> I wanted to, I, no, I like what I, I like. That's right. <laughs> I like what I want. I'm not talking, and I didn't go I understand. for. We understand. Yeah, I, I wasn't looking for a, a super big. I had 85% uh, almost a carrot. And the wow. way it was cut, it was beautiful. I can't show it to you because when my son got engaged, I gave him my engagement ring so wow. he could have it put in a different setting for his wife because. He said, my kids asked me for my wedding rings. My daughter wow. that went home to be with the Lord, I gave her my wedding band. She wow. said, mom, can I have your wedding band? Because you and dad have had a long and a good marriage. And I gave her my wedding band and she had it made larger, her and her husband. And that's how they got married. My son took my engagement ring because <laughs> we've had a good marriage. And he said, wow. I want, I want that. And so that I don't have an engagement ring or my original wedding band. My husband gave me another wedding band, uh, but the one I, my son has his. So wow. we went, we picked it out. It's not about getting one so super big. Now, 
let me put it to you this way. Stop looking at, I got this, all these, that, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You need yeah. a house. You need to pay off your bills. You need some money in the bank. You're not trying to get three right. carrots. You understand? I wouldn't put $10,000 in a ring. That's ridiculous. You wow. need to go get a house. You need to have the things. You need to pay off your cars. Um, listen. Uh, okay. Let well, me listen, listen. You're listening to a godly woman's view, but I'm telling you, she's saying so many good things, and I'm laughing at this point because I'm saying that girl some said, people I have that's right. messed up. You know, they want the ring, they want the dress, they want the, yeah. the wedding. They forget that there's life after the wedding. Life, life after, after the wedding. Yes, when you come back from that yes, honey, spending <laughs> ten, twenty thousand dollars on a wedding reception, you're not going to get it back. No, they spend you're more not than that. Get, oh, well, yeah. honey, we had the wedding, the reception downstairs in the church. That's what we did back in the day. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We had it downstairs. Oh, it's just so and so cooked the food. And I all can't, that good stuff. I can't. You too much. I tell you, listen. But you it, it, the money. That's right. You tell them you that's got right. a <laughs> and, and And just about three years later, we moved into our first house. And then wow. 15 years later, we moved into the house we're in now. Okay. Someone says, um, um, Charlotte Poole, uh, you write a book. They said, write a yeah, book. Yeah, that's Evangelist Charlotte Poole. She's the head of the intercessors for my son in law. Son in love, uh, Dr. Anita Phillips' husband. She's his, oh, his okay. head of the intercessors, as Sister Marlene yeah. Simmons is the head of our intercessors. Wow, that is so I seen very her in years. Oh my God. Oh, God oh, uses that girl. Awesome. Trust me, God uses her powerfully. We just listen. We had a service mm -hmm. Sunday that they prayed into existence. I don't even wow. know how to explain. The Holy Ghost came into that church Sunday, like I don't even know how to tell you what happened in there, but it's wow. because of the prayer. Wow, that's it. And you know what? I really admire you, um, Evangelist Shirley Graham, because you do have a prayer life. And listen, that is our greatest weapon. And you know how to that use is it the weapon, honey. against it. the enemy. And this is what we need to do. Women and men that are listening, we need to pray until things happen. We need to pray until people change. Prayer does change things, but we need to pray until people change. Listen, you've been yes. listening to a godly woman's view, and we, we're not going to hold um, Evangelist Shirley Graham long, because I'm telling you, I'm just sitting here just soaking it. Oh, bad. you got me cranked now. We can talk. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to talk now. <laughs> <laughs> She's ready to talk, y'all. Listen, and you guests and you viewers, you are awesome. You've been showing your love and putting up your thumbs and hitting those there. Um, hey, hitting Jonathan Bowler. And I'm telling you, it's good to show love. And that's what we need to do. Continue to show love towards one another in this woman of God. Now, listen, I'm going to ask her another question before she goes off. She's going to tell us. Um, where you can reach her, but what uh, what is really on her heart to speak to you um, that are listening? She's been speaking, and there was a lot of questions I had to ask her. But she she we we just flowed in the spirit, and wherever God wanted her to go on tonight is where she went. All right, but um, I want to ask you this: um, What do you find is the greatest and most rewarding part of your ministry? Seeing people what get saved. Is, let me just ask you again. That people get saved. That's it. The saved and you know that is the Holy Ghost and come out of what they were in. Because wow, there's wow. nothing too hard for God. I love to see people get delivered. The sad part about it is most folk, hi there, Jeff Holland. God bless you. I love you too. Uh he's down in Texas. Uh the thing is that most people are seeking grandeur in this life. I don't do that. That, that's mm -hmm. not what I'm about. I want to see people get saved and delivered and have a life. The times we're going through are so crucial. It is so wicked out here. And it's about to be, hey, Pastor Pam, Ford, she uh, invited me to do her installation homily. homily. Wow. Anyway, wow. people are, they need Christ like never before. During this pandemic and people have been home and shut in, the purpose I believe that God used for the believer Hallelujah. is to draw near to Jesus in this period. While we're going through this COVID, uh, many of us, we just went back into our church on Sunday morning and uh, we're still online for Wednesday in my prayer that I do every Thursday night at 930. But and it's awesome. 
uh, it, God comes in and we get miracles. People are getting miracles and they're testifying wow, about it. Wow, wow. From cancer and all kinds of stuff, jobs and opportunities. And one lady, uh, someone just gave her a freezer and she didn't have no money to get it. And God had a person just give her a freezer. Because I told yeah, her, don't yeah. listen, keep your freezer stopped because this thing is not over. The Lord told me no, as soon as ahead. the second week in uh, March. He told me there is something coming far worse than this COVID that we were experiencing in 2020. If you notice in Brazil and also in India, they are actually cremating people in the street as of mm. today. And that's not Brazil right, that's cremation, right. but over in India, because it has gone berserk, this pandemic. There's so many different uh, variances that are coming off of the COVID. And I pray for everybody that's on the line right now. If that virus touches your flesh, Hallelujah. if it touches your clothes, I command that virus to die when it touches us. I say be under the blood. How do you get under the blood? You got to live a life that's saved. You got you to gotta walk in forgiveness. You got to walk in humility. You got to have to crave after God and say, Lord, you uh, place me on this earth for your yes, service. Lord. We are here to set people free. And I want to see people get free that are bound by anything and everything. And that was kind of the service that we had Sunday. There were people that were mm, jacked mm, up. Mm, mm. I mean, really <laughs> jacked up. Jesus. And God was throwing them left and right. I mean, deliverance was popping left and right. Yes, God doesn't want Thank you to be bound by what you have been Hallelujah. about. The less stations and the rape yes. that you grew up under. You can't hate who did what to you. You can't hate that ex-husband that's abusing you. And I'm telling you women right here now, if somebody's kicking you all over like a football, and talking trash to you, you might have to pray for them at another address. See, I years know that's ago, right. another years ago they told you couldn't you couldn't get a divorce. Now God is not for divorce, but it is here. It is not the unpardonable sin. God right, never right. called anybody to mm -hmm. be abused, but you can't that's just right. walk out. You got to pray until God releases you, but yes. you can't be bound by the spirit of control and abuse. Because mm -hmm. God has a purpose for you, and that purpose is not that you're somebody's football. Do you understand wow, what I'm saying? Wow. God put you on this earth for a reason. And so, but you want to find out what is your will. So start with the simple thing. Pass out tracks. Smile at people when you're in the supermarket. Say, God bless you. If you're on the telephone or in the supermarket line, I, I give people a soft witness or a hard witness. Every time I sit down on a plane, I, that family, whoever that person is, is sitting next to me on a plane. I just look at them. I say, you're going to hear about Jesus today. And I wait for the <laughs> opening. I wait for yes, something Lord. that Thank you, you know what I'm talking about, sis. Yes, ma'am. And then I come right over here and Jesus tell them, today. yes, Lord, God has a reason for this. And people, they just tell me their problems. Wherever I am, they'll just start telling me their problems. God is about to send a revival on this earth like we have never seen. Jesus and it's not going to be run by a person. It's going to mm. be run by the power of the almighty God. God. Yes, and all Lord. I tell you, the Bible Thank says, you, says the harvest is great, but the laborers of you pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would mm -hmm. send laborers into yes, the vineyard. Lord. And I, when, when I read that scripture, oh, I don't know how many hundreds of years ago, I told the Lord, I'm applying for the job, God. Make Jesus. a soul winner because I saw hell. I saw people dropping into hell when I was 16 years of age, when I had walking pneumonia and I was sick as a dog. And at the foot of my bed came a great opening. Flames were jumping up. And I saw people walking towards that opening, but they weren't aware that it was a big pit there. And they didn't know it until they took that final step and went down into hell. Wow. And the screams that came up were so horrible. I cannot forget it to this present day. Mm -hmm. You and I are obligated. God didn't save us for comfort. You're going to have many tests and trials. My oldest wow. daughter. She became drug addicted because she had, uh, and a, the person that started her on drugs was a kid in church. Then what? I don't Jeez. even have time to go into that. She had her hormonal, uh, chemical system was off balance. She didn't have the hormones in her system that went to the brain to say that's enough. 
That's enough. Mm -hmm. So she could take more drugs than people out there in the street. But she was a soul winner. Whenever she yes. ran into someone that wanted Christ, she would send them Hallelujah. to us. And there were times that people lived with us. A young man that lived with us, he was a drug lord. He wasn't a user. He was addicted to the money. And I kept him for months for him to get saved. He finally got killed trying to get out of the system. They shot him to death. He had, I don't know how many, 30 some thousand dollars on him when they killed him. But when I got to see his body, a smile was on his face. He went back into the system because he was addicted to the money. And he wow. would call me collect. I said, Negro, what you calling me collect with all the money you got out there on that street corner? <laughs> and he would just laugh. But he protected my daughter out there. You don't know how God will right. work for you. you and sure he, don't. Told, he told me, he said, uh, talk to me, mother. And I would tell him, I said, now, look, if you're dying, just call Jesus. Because the word of God says, whosoever calleth on the name of the, the, Lord, name of the Lord shall, shall be saved. saved. And I said, yes, just start calling Jesus. Yeah. And when I saw him laying in that coffin, because they asked me to come and preach his funeral, he had a big smile on his face. I knew he called Jesus. Wow, wow. Because you might have to make it in on the last go round. But I, I'm crying out there to all of you out there. Stop worrying about a husband. God, if you have a desire to be married, then you got to fight that thing in prayer because the devil doesn't want anybody to be married. And he sure don't want you to be married to the right person because right, he exactly. that it to bring forth our Levites also. Okay, wow. but you got to go in there and pray in the spirit, <laughs> not like this. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I'm gonna oh, pray for three days and then hmm. I'm I'm tired. I look like nobody's asked me out for a date. No, the Bible says this is the confidence that we can have in Him. Yeah, First amen. John 5, 14, 15, go down to 16 verse. This is the confidence <laughs> that we can have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, is it God's will for us to be married? Sure, it is. Yes, I know it the is. scripture that people are saying, well. A single person doesn't have to ask the husband, oh, sweetheart, it's much better with somebody. It's yes, better it to is. have a fight with somebody and then make up with somebody. It's, you know, marriage is not easy. You, there's no some not. ways that no. y'all don't agree no, and all that kind of stuff, but it's still good. You got to learn yes, how to good. be married. Pastor and I were meant to be married, but we had three years that we had to learn how to be married. Okay? Wow. Yes, and after yes. we learn how to be married, we flow mm -hmm. good. But at the, that the first three years, I was like, let me out of here. Let me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but God worked it out because our oh, hearts were in the right person. place. But so I wanted to win people to Jesus. And if you get that thing in your heart, Lord, use me to bring people to Christ, then God will do whatever he wants to do with you. And let me let me stop right there. But during this COVID, this is the time to get close to Christ. Say, yes. fill me till I overflow. Flow. Fill me until I'm saved to the bone. Yes, so if Lord. I scratch, it's still wood, not press wood, but it's real wood underneath there. Yes. Just yes. save me till I sin no more. My main thing is my favorite chapter has become St. John, the 17th chapter. And that says this, and I'm read this verse to you, St. John 17 and 14. It says, I have given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of this world. So, yeah, they're going to give you a hard time on the job. Somebody's not going to like you because they recognize the Christ in us. Then in the 15th verse, it says, I pray not that thou should have taken them out of this world, but that mm. thou should keep them from the evil. They are not of this world as I am not of this world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Now here, feelings. Say feelings with me. Everybody feelings. say feelings. 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 Do you understand what I'm saying? They yes, don't feel yes. nothing. The devil will have you hung up with feeling. I feel sad. I feel depressed. I feel oppressed. I feel. <laughs> we are royal priesthood. Everybody that's saved yes. is of a royal priesthood. I'm the king's mm -hmm. daughter. I'm his Hallelujah. favorite daughter. Yes, you might Lord. be his favorite son. There's nobody that God daughter. loves more than you. He says, I've engraved an image of you. In my hand, when God looks in his hand, he sees your face. He would have died for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should, believe not, in him should not perish, have everlasting but have everlasting. Yes, God Lord. Gave, if only you needed salvation, 
Jesus would have died for you. Now here, watch this. They tore his body to shreds until Isaiah says that he didn't resemble a human being. He was so, he said in Psalms, yes. all my bones stay up. Jesus. You can see his uh, ribcage. You can see his thighs. Because Jesus. he was torn to shreds with a cat of nine Jesus. tails and 39 mm -hmm. lashes. And 39 is the 39 major diseases yes. in the earth Jesus. today. Yes. And so yes. Jesus took a lash for every major disease major and every disease. one of his yes. cousins. Do you, Do you hear? And so when he, if he took all that beating and he couldn't die, they couldn't have killed him. He said, no man takes my life. I give yes. it up myself. And he hung there until he said, it is finished into thy hands i commend my oh, spirit God. that means you can be delivered from the gay life you can be bisexual life you can be out of it you can be out of crazy mean as a junkyard dog on crack you can get saved until you are none of those things yes, lord jesus Do you hear what i'm saying so yes, don't go by your feelings now i'm, I'm gonna end it with this lord, my sister mercy. here a uh, pastor anita spalding you don't call me whatever you want. Some people call me Avenge. Some people call me Mom G. Some people call me Mom Graham. Mom, I answer to all of it. Doesn't matter. Okay. So the thing is this. Oh, what you feel, she helped me. She went online close to two years ago and started talking about weight loss. I have lost 50 pounds. Wow, and you look 50 great. Pounds. Lord I've Jesus. gone from a 20 down to some 12, 14s. Okay. Wow. okay. I took her advice. She said, sugar. I'm not using any sugar. Mm -hmm. I didn't know yes. that. I put sugar yes. out of my life. I went with vegetables and oven fried, mm -hmm. grilled. Them. I, sometimes I have fried chicken. I had fried chicken two days in a row this past weekend. Okay? But when it comes, I don't mess with the sugar. I'm mm -hmm. at a place. I had to get it out my system. Now yep. it's out. I don't even crave haagen dash ice cream. Mm -hmm. None you of don't. those things. I don't anymore. have I none of that. Crave mm -hmm. that stuff. All I need Jesus. is a spoonful of something sweet. So if my husband is dessert, <laughs> I get me a spoonful of it, and I do that, and, and that satisfies it. my hunger. But mm -hmm. I can do that now. I couldn't do it the first month, second month, third month. I had to get it out my system. How did I get it out? God, take it out. Take it out. Take it out. A lot of water. Walking. Yes, exercise. Drinking. I don't eat after 7 o'clock at night. Okay? Wow. You do what you have to do. And it will leave you. Oh, I want to eat. I want to eat. That's your flesh running away with you. You got to call your flesh down. You got to call your flesh down so you don't ring that telephone number and call up somebody to come back into your life that's going to do you damage. Wow. wow. You know what I'm saying? No, you can't do that. The Lord told me one time when I was coming home from work, when I was going through that period of time where I wouldn't date anybody, oh, and I stopped to get gas on Johnson's. Avenue and Clinton Avenue. And while I'm in there, the devil was sitting on my uh, my left shoulder and he was saying, turn your car when you get out of this gas station, go down the hill and go back to that person. The Lord was sitting on my right shoulder. And he was saying, go up that hill and go home and stay safe. And it was, that was, I mean, I could literally hear it. When that man finished filling my tank up with gas, I turned my car so hard and so fast going up Clinton Avenue to go home where my, my mother and father were. I burned rubber. I saw tracks behind me on the on the ground. 23 years later, I'm praying at my dining room table and the with uh, three other girls. The Lord spoke through my sister, Marlene Simmons, my one of my yes. dearest friends. Yes, yes, and yes. The Lord spoke through her. She ain't, I never told nobody about it. I just got in my house and slid on the back of the door down to the ground to the floor and said, thank God I'm in the house. I made it. I escaped. Mm. Years later, the Lord popped a vision in front of my face, and the Lord said through her, the Lord said, you, that day when you could have turned your car to the left and gone to sin, but you turned your car to the right and went mm -hmm. home and was safe. He said, that's the day I chose you. See, the wow. decision you're making today is your tomorrow's prosperity. Wow. Okay? And the <laughs> Lord showed me what I had on. That day, who remembers what they had on 23 years ago? I don't know what I had, what I had on yesterday. The Lord showed me myself in an aerial view in my car with the dress, a yellow dress with blue flowers and a white boat neck collar. And I'm sitting there holding the stern wheel. And he gave, see, God is in your future while that which is now has already been. That which is to come is now. 
and God requires what he spoke over you in the past. Yes, Lord. Thank okay, you, Jesus. Shut up now. Listen, you've been watching A Godly Woman's View with a, a awesome woman of God who have shared with us her Hallelujah. testimony, her journey, her life. And I'm telling you what wisdom, what knowledge, what counsel, what understanding that she has given unto us on today. You know, an enemy didn't want this to come forth um, for us to hear. We had a few technical uh, difficulties getting on and we never, I never had that in um, with just live stream. That's why I always like to use it. But this I said, always there was a lot. Yes. Yes, ma'am. This always happens to me because the devil doesn't want me to be heard. Yes, well, you were heard tonight. They're saying they want part two. I'm seeing it just popping up. They want part two, part two, part two. Yes, I see y'all. Okay. We're going we gonna, we gonna to enter that and ask her about it, okay? Um, listen, I want you to do me a favor. God has blessed um, this program on tonight. Normally, we ask for a seed for a godly woman's view. And I don't normally do this, but I need you to plant a seed in Mom Graham's life. And I'm going to give you her cash app. Now, she didn't know I was going to give out her cash app, but I'm giving out her cash app. It's dollar sign mom, M-O-M, Graham, G-R-A-H-A-M. What's the rest of it, mom? Is that it? 43? 43. Okay, 43. So it's dollar sign mom Graham 43. If you have enjoyed her, listen, if you even want to be blessed, we like need to learn how to give out of our family. Some of you might say, well, I don't have, I just is all I have. Well, if you just take and plant that seed into her life, I know that it's going to come back to you 100 fold return. Listen, it was, I, I don't believe that God would even drop this in my spirit. I was talking to my husband yesterday about it. I says, you know, I feel led of the Lord to um just to plant a seed in mom Graham's life because she's just been so instrumental in doing this pandemic. I know she hasn't been traveling like she used to, but you know, and then sometimes your change gets strange and your dollar wanna holler. But we are praying today that you, God will touch your heart. And I'm asking you that God, you allow God to touch your heart. No, that's not that, 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 you know, some people say, oh, that's the devil telling me to give that. No, he's not gonna tell you to give no money into ministry or to a man or woman of God. That is God, release it. And some of you said, well, this is a sacrifice. Again, I'm asking you. And the Bible said, you have not because you ask not that you should give and give it out of your heart. Give it until um, uh, you know that you, just just give. That's what I'm going to say. G-I-V-E is mom gram 43 dollar sign. And I was going to have you cash app it to um, a winner, but I'm not going to do that tonight. I want you to cash app it directly to her so that she can see that it's from you. And we've been asking for twenty one dollars all um, uh, this year. And no, 2021, 21 means that we are maturing. And I believe we should mature in our giving. It says, give and it shall be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, shall men and women give into your bosom. And I believe this is good ground that we're planting into, all right? And those of you that give, I know you're already um, cash apping her, whatever you, it is and, and that God has laid it on your heart, $21, $31, $41, $101, Whatever it is, give it to her today. She didn't even ask for it. You hear me? She just came on and to be a blessing to the people of God. She wanted to bless the people of God. And she's blessed all of us. I know she's blessed me. I don't know about you. Don't you dare hang up that dial. Don't change that channel now. We're talking about, we're talking about giving. But it's so important that we learn how to plant into somebody else's life. Listen, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. Let me say that again. What you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. And this is the time. You say, no, this is the pandemic. No, God is still a blessing God. God is still a God that, that supersedes any type of pandemic, any type of poverty, whatever you're going through, God is going to bring you out. But I'm saying tonight, plant that seed. Plant that seed in her life. If it's $5, if it's $6, whatever you have is dollar sign mom, G-R-A-H-A-M 
43. Again, that's dollar sign mom Graham. If you have enjoyed her and with 43 at the end, if you have enjoyed her tonight, plant that seed. I know that I'm already going to plant my seed after I get off this, um, this call. This is, this has been such a blessing, mom Graham. Oh, I God. It. And, and folk want to come to your church. Um, I saw uh, different ones posting said, what is the address? So I want you to give them the address of the ministry, what time your services are. All right. Yes. All right. I, I, it's Holy Temple Church of God in Christ. It's 8989 First Avenue. Uh, um, hey, hon. Do I spell out first? Or, or, or do we one? Huh? The church address, I always get a mix up. It's 89 First Avenue. First, F I R S T? F I R S T. Yes, I'm online. I know this. Yes, you're on. We're on. Oh, God, help us. Uh, that's, uh, that's okay. 89 First Avenue, Tom's, T O M S, River, R I V E R, New Jersey. If you put 89 First Avenue, it will end your navigating system or your phone. It'll bring you right there. It's exit 80 off the Garden State Parkway going south. Wow. Yes. <laughs> She's talking to her significant other. Go to look, my significant husband over there. I can never remember that. Go to Holy Temple Church of God in Christ a website and you will see the address there. But we start service on Sunday morning at 10. We need you to be there by 9.45 uh, at the late. Uh, we have social distancing. You have to wear your mask. We take temperatures and everything. So that's what we do on Sunday morning. On We're online teaching Bible study on Wednesday night, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. And then I'll be back online uh, at 9.30 on Thursday night for prayer. I'm trying to get to start prayer a little bit earlier, but this week it'll be 9.30. But you'll see wow. an announcement on my Facebook page for everything. But Sunday, it's the only time that we're in service. Listen, we uh, we have enjoyed um, our evangelist, Shirley Graham, Mom Graham. We see so many bishops and pastors have joined us on tonight. Bishop Bellinger, I see you, um, my friend and my brother. And yeah. we saw Bishop Kathy Pollard and Pastor uh, Pamela Pettiford and uh, my own um, overseer, Bishop-elect uh, Richard Spaulding. And I, I just want to, I, I, I just so many names have come up, but thank God for each and every one of the ministers, evangelists, Doris Reagan. Oh my God, so many of you. And listen, we want to continue to pray for one another. That is what's really important that we learn how to pray for one another so and love one another. And why don't you just, we be on Facebook a lot. Some people do, I know I do, but I go on and I encourage people. I go to the messenger checking on pastors and bishops and apostles and overseers and, and missionaries and, and pulpit priests and all that and, and, and pew, pew sitters. But I, I just encourage everyone because I want to find out how you're doing. And because this is a time that we should really show love. You know, and that's that's when the world will know that we love Jesus. And listen, we thank God for you again for watching A Godly Woman's View on tonight. And next week, we have a great, um, another great show that will be coming on. Uh, praise God. We hey, Let me just bring it up. We're getting this technology together, y'all. I'm getting good at this. Uh, we have our um, uh, a, the Apostle Sally Cheney's story, and she's the author of Hidden Secrets of the Heart. This is a woman of God. She's also um, um, in ministry with Apostle Paula Green, and, and we're looking to get her even very soon. And then the very next week, which is May the 18th, we have an exclusive interview with the, with Pastor Rose Neighbors. She will be telling her story of how she was a pastor. She fell from grace. She um, was on drugs and homeless, but God saved her and brought her on back. And we thank God for her ministry. So tonight we have been listening to our um, evangelist, Shirley Graham, who has definitely poured into our life. Listen, I love you. 
I love you guys so much. And I want to, I want you to continue to do the work of God, continue to love on, on your families, on your friends. Listen, we got some things to do. I don't care about the pandemic. God is God. to us past that. All right. God That's bless sweet. you. Um, Evangelist Graham, you can have the last words and we're going to say bye, bye, bye. All or right. Even All right. Listen, I, I'm not one that spends a lot of time on Facebook because I've been so busy. And I make sure my prayer time is in and all that. A lot of times people send me texts. And if, if you send me a text and I don't answer you, it's not because I'm ignoring you. Send it back to me in another couple of days because I get so many during the course of a day. And sometimes I, if I sat and just looked at that, my phone all day, I wouldn't do anything else. So if you don't hear from me, send it back again. And I will more than likely, I'll get to you sooner or later. Okay. God bless you. God bless you to all of you. This is a time for God to shine. When everything looks crazy, this is a time. Don't go by your feelings. Talk to oppression, anxiety, depression oh, of every you, sort and tell it, get lost in the name of Jesus. You won't feel bad. You're not going to feel good. Your heart can be broken. Listen, I got enough stuff in my life that I could be sad every day, but I refuse. <laughs> I refuse the feeling. Because Jesus is Lord. And after a while, he's going to answer. And with patience, possess ye your spirit. Oh, and he's yes. going to bring that thing to pass. Just keep praying. But praise, pray. Lord, I thank you that my granddaughter saved. Lord, I thank you for the job. Lord, I thank you for X, Y, and Z. All right? Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, bless these people. Bless this woman of God. Pastor Anita Spaulding, Father God. Her heart is in the right place. She just wants to be a blessing and uplift the people of God so that they can go on. I pray that you will expand her ministry way beyond her wildest imagination. Give her favor everywhere around this world. Cause her name to echo in places that she can't even imagine. Let her body be healed. Protect her son. Protect yes, her Jesus. husband and yes, everything that concerns her in the name of Jesus and prosper her because there's no selfishness or self-centeredness in her at all. So, Father, all of these that have participated and those that have sown into me, God, I declare and decree that you're going to give it back to them a hundredfold in Jesus' almighty name. Amen and amen. And thank God for my bishop, Bishop Charles W. Harris. I saw evangelist Regina Gaynor, just so many. God bless you. Love you till we meet again. God be with you. Bye-bye. <laughs>